What happened after the Great Fire of London? Everyone knows that the best time of a barbecue is the end because of the leftovers. <laughs> the crispy bits are the best bits. My very, very great grandmother, who lived during the time of the Great Fire of London, went back after the fire burned out and found lots of burnt crispy wood. That's her there, scoffing. Four days after a small fire began in a bakery in Pudding Lane, a lot of London had burned to the ground. Not just buildings made of wood, but buildings made of stone too, like St Paul's Cathedral. When the wind changed direction, it blew the fire towards the house of diary writer Samuel Pepys. So he buried his favourite lump of cheese in the back garden and escaped to the other side of the river. Dear diary, good news, the fire is finally dying down. Last night they used gunpowder to blow up lots of houses near where I live. This stopped the fire from reaching my house. Which means my favourite cheese will be safe. Yeah. The fire had blazed for four days and by the fifth day most of the fire had been put out. But London was sad. Only a small number of people had died but lots and lots of others were left without homes or belongings or jobs or without anything really. More than a hundred thousand people were left homeless. But Pepys still had his cheese. Your Majesty, I've come to tell you that the people of London have no homes. Schmookums? Ah. Huh. Hmm, I think we should build new houses and make them out of stone and bricks so they don't burn as easily. Who's a clever boy? Thank you, Your Highness. Not you. Arr. One reason the fire spread so easily was because the top floor of the houses all jutted out. So the new rules said that building like this was against the law. So much of London had burned down that King Charles wanted everything rebuilt. Over 13,000 houses and nearly 100 churches had been ruined, including St Paul's Cathedral. The man he chose to plan a lot of the rebuilding was called Christopher Wren. Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door, see all the people. I am so bored of drawing churches. If I get asked to plan one more church... Excuse me, Christopher Wren, sir. The king has sent a message that he wants you to draw a... Um, a, a, chi a cherry, a child, a chicken, cheese. I'm bored of drawing churches. He wants you to build another ch challenging project. What does he want me to build? Yeah, you. Oh, bless you. He wants to challenge you to build a new version of St. Paul's Cathedral. But isn't a cathedral just a big church? <laughs> no more steeples! It took Sir Christopher Wren 35 years to build St. Paul's, and he used a dome instead of a steeple. Sir Christopher Wren also helped design a tall stone column called the Monument. A monument is something that helps us remember. You can still see the monument in London today. It's very tall. And if it was laid on its side, the tip would touch the place in Pudding Lane where the fire first started. But I don't need to visit the monument to remember the fire. I've got my stories to remember. Oh, my grandma taught me a rhyme to remember the year it happened. In 1666, London burnt like rotten sticks. Oh, I like rotten sticks. <laughs> <laughs>